In this video, I'm going to teach you how to do your own Google Ads audit for e-commerce in 10 minutes or less. Hi, I'm Daryl and I run Bigflare, the Google Ads agency for e-commerce companies that want to scale with paid traffic. This video is for you if you're an e-commerce store owner or marketer who's working with a Google Ads agency or contractor. It's for you if you are not ever quite sure how to know if they're doing a good job or not. I'll show you a quick 10 minute checklist you can use to quickly judge your Google Ads account. This 10 minute checklist is the simple top level version of the in-depth audit process that I have developed and used personally hundreds of times over the past 10 years of my career. All right, so without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so here we have an example account and I'm going to show you how to do a 10 minute audit on this account. So first of all, go to your campaign screen here and check out all your campaigns. And maybe let's do a nice long date range so we get a good amount of data. Let's look at the past 120 days. Uh, and the first thing you want to look at, the first thing I always look at is your return on ad spend and compare that to your impression shares as well. So you can make sure you've got your columns for conversion value over cost search impression share, search lost IS due to rank, and search lost IS due to budget. And what you wanna be looking out for, uh, a few different things here. So first of all, you want to obviously be looking out for any campaigns with a, a ROAS that is below, well below your target, and a, especially if there's a ROAS that is below your profit threshold. So if there's campaigns just not generating money, that's a big red flag. Uh, but also another red flag is look for campaigns that are generating a good amount of money, too much money, a really good ROAS, and then check their impression shares. So for example, we have this campaign here. It's doing a 3.5x ROAS. Now for this particular client, that's a really good return over ad spend, but it's only getting a 64% uh, impression share, which means we could be getting more impressions, more clicks, more sales, if we were to do something differently here. And the thing we need to be done doing differently is shown by these two columns, search lost IS due to rank and search lost IS due to budget. So in this case, we see a good strong ROAS, but a low impression share. And we know uh, that we could get more impressions, more sales, if we increase our budget by 20%. So that's what this column here means or if we increase our bids by around about that much, or we increase our bids by some amount, we don't really know how much, we just know we need to increase our bids a lot. And if we increase the bids enough, we'll get 15% market share. So what you wanna look out for here is uh, low ROAS campaigns and also high ROAS campaigns. And when you see high ROAS campaigns, you wanna make sure that they're getting as high an impression share as possible. And if they're not, then you wanna look at these two next columns to see why they're not. And oftentimes you might uncover like big sources of more money with really simple tweak tweaks. Like this campaign here is getting a good ROAS but it's losing 20% impressions due to budget. So if you just increase the budget on this campaign, you'll make more money. So look for those low ROAS or high ROAS but low impression share. Uh, another thing, quick and easy thing to look for is look in your change history. So, if your agency or contractor or freelancer is being lazy and not doing all that much stuff, then when you go into the change history, which is right here in Google Ads, you're gonna see not much stuff going on in here. So what you wanna see is like, for example, you can see 12,900 changes were made uh, in this account uh, over that time period. So you wanna, be, you wanna see lots of changes being made you know, every week uh, possibly even every day, but multiple times per week, you wanna see changes being made uh, and like scrutinize the changes as well. Like you can see here, there was a budget created, there was a campaign created, platforms were added. Like if, if for the past one month, the only change that was being made was, uh, you know, campaign name changed or like the bid adjustment on one keyword was changed and that's like the only thing that's been done weekly for the past month. That's kind of a red, red flag that your account isn't being really well looked after. So when you go to change history, you just want to see a lot of stuff going on, basically, and a lot of meaningful stuff. You don't have to know exactly what everything means, but do have a look at what change was made and what campaign it was made to, just to get a sense of how active your account is being right now. Okay, let's look specifically at search campaigns. So 
in search campaigns, uh, a quick check you can do is to uh, pop open the keyword planner tool. Uh, and I've popped it open in a separate window over here. And from here, what you want to do is discover new keywords and you want to just plug in a few of your bullseye keywords here. So for example, I know on this account, they are advertising for magnesium three and eight uh, as one of their products. So search for some of your bullseye keywords. And then now here's the cool thing. You want to add a filter and then type in, search for your filter, type in account and click on this filter here, exclude keywords in my account. Now what you've got here is a list of keywords that Google thinks is relevant to the thing that you just typed in. And these keywords are not in the account anywhere. So uh, you, can start, you can start to get an idea here of potential keyword opportunities that are being missed because they're not in your account. And if you see a lot of missed opportunities in your account, uh, and if you see a lot of really obvious missed opportunities, like let's say your product name, um, you've got your product name and then just like buy product name. If they haven't even got buy product name, or if they haven't got product name as a keyword in your account, then some alarm bells might be ringing. And then just look down, you wanna look down this list, you can scroll through the list like this. You wanna be looking, basically in this report, you don't wanna see anything that has high search volume and is a really good keyword for you. If you see that kind of stuff, if you see a lot of that kind of stuff, then that's a sign that the person running your account isn't doing a good job of keyword coverage. All the best high volume keywords need to be there in your account. And that right there is how you check for that. Uh, you also wanna check some basic ad stuff. So if you go into one of your campaigns, let's go into the Magnesium 3 and 8 campaign and let's look at some ads. So you want to make sure that uh, you're running expanded text ads and responsive search ads. Um, if you see only responsive search ads being run and no expanded text ads being run, that's a bit of a red flag. And if, uh, the other way around, if you see expanded text ads being run, pause for one second, text being run. No, no, don't, don't, don't actually pause, just keep the video, keep the video running. And Omar can cut out, can cut out that part of the video. Omar, cut out that part of the video, please. Now, on the flip side, if you see only expanded text ads being run and not also responsive search ads, um, then that's a, a smaller red flag than the first one. Um, however, that's still a bit of a red flag. You wanna see both types of ads, expanded text ads and responsive search ads being run concurrently. And you normally wanna see multiple expanded text ads. You wanna see anywhere from two to five expanded text ads alongside one responsive search ad. And when you look at the expanded text ads, you wanna see that they have three headlines and two description lines. So you can, if we open up this particular ad, what you can see is we've got three headlines and two description lines. Now what you'll sometimes see when you come in here is you will see this. You'll see an ad set up without headline three and without description two. That's a big red flag if you see that. That means that the person running your account has not updated the ads since years ago. Like there's like a couple of years ago when we got the addition of headline three and description two. And I still see when I'm reviewing Google ads accounts today in 2001, I still see some accounts that have ads that don't have the third headline and the second description line. And when I see that invariably, it's because whoever was running the account was kind of lazy and they haven't updated the ads in like two years. Like we, we've had three headlines and two descriptions for like multiple years now, folks. So big red flag if you see that. Uh, okay, uh, shopping campaigns. Let's have a quick review of some things you can look out for in your shopping campaigns. So uh, you want to look in your shopping campaigns at two main areas. These are just the two quickest areas for you to quickly review and spot red flags. If you go over to your products, 
uh, I would rank your top performing products by cost and then what you want to see is good headlines so you want to make sure that your headlines here have uh, really awesome keyword choices inside the headline so think of all the most common ways that your um, that your product could be searched for and make sure those keywords are in the headline and if you see one thing to look out for here is if you see headlines that are just kind of auto generated by scraping the, the, the headline or the product title from the site and it doesn't include the words that people would use to search for the products in that headline, red flag, okay? That's like another one of those like lazy things where sometimes people just like auto import the titles from the site and never change them and they never even bothered to check whether the titles on the site are kind of the best titles to use in Google Shopping ads and they're missing out on loads of traffic because they didn't put, they didn't customize the shopping ads to have the best keywords inside the title. So always have the best keywords inside the title, check in diagnostics, and ideally what you wanna see is this, basically all your products are ready to serve and nothing is disapproved. And if something is disapproved, it's okay, uh, like, violation of shopping ads policy. If you see they're disapproved for this reason, this is the one reason where sometimes you just cannot fix it. Like, and Google's being really unspecific about the shopping ads policy, but the, your agency or contractor should have at least tried to fix it. So you should be able to say to them, oh, okay, I noticed I had X amount of ads disapproved due to violation of shopping policy. So what did Google say when you talked to them about getting this fixed? You could ask them that, right? And if they were like, oh, oh we never talked to Google about that. Um, well, then maybe they kind of should because sometimes you can fix these by talking to Google. Now, other things that you want to watch out for here, like if you see disapproval due to GTIN error, if you see disapproval due to something wrong with the image, like maybe there was a, a, a marketing image on, on the product image, like you're not allowed to have uh, like certificates or prices or um, or any graphics like plastered over the top of your product image. It's just got to be pure product image, right? So if you see GTIN errors or or Google product category not found or something wrong with the image, there was no image submitted or there was some tweak to the image needed to get it corrected. And especially if you see a lot of errors due to those reasons, that's another red flag because those all those reasons are really easy to fix. It takes about like five minutes. It takes one minute to fix a GTIN error, right? Like if you've got 200 GTIN errors, 200 minutes and you could have 200 more products up and live in Google Shopping. Even less than 200 minutes because you can probably do it in bulk really, really quickly. And images are like, if sometimes there's just an issue with the feed and the image isn't submitted. So really easy to fix and you don't want to see high numbers of disapproved products due to easy to fix problems. And uh, okay, so we've done search shopping, let's do retargeting. Uh, display, so retargeting is going to be under display. First of all, you want to make sure that you are running retargeting. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's uh, sometimes you're going to see accounts where retargeting just isn't being run uh, for no real good reason um, and in those cases you're going to want to ask oh hey I noticed like we weren't doing any retargeting on this account um, why is that uh, and you want to make sure there's a good reason for that because nine times out of ten retargeting just works so you want to be running it uh, and then when you click into your retargeting campaign you want to make sure that you're targeting not just all visitors. So one of the things you'll see sometimes is uh, they set up a retargeting campaign and the only audience that's being targeted is all visitors past 30 days. Boom, wham bam, thank you ma'am. Uh, that's a really lazy way of setting up your uh, retargeting campaign. And what you really want to do is you want to see them targeting lots of different segments of your users because like all visitors just targeting everyone and blasting them with the same me uh, message not great but you want to segment out cart abandoners into their own like target audience uh, all visitors fine to target but like separate out product viewers people who viewed the product um, but didn't like get to the cart yet uh, like all visitors 14 days smart list page so you just want to see some intelligence uh, and some thought applied 
to the audiences you're actually targeting. And then in terms of ads, what you want to see is, you want to see some responsive display ads running um, and So you want to click open your ads like this and you want to make sure that you're running the uh, responsive display ad format uh, for your uh, Google Display Network retargeting campaigns. If you've also got um, banner ads like custom created banner ads added in there as well, that's fine, that's great, that's a bonus. Uh, but at the very least, you want to make sure that you've got this format running responsive display ad gets the most volume by far on the Google Display Network. And uh, in your retargeting campaign, this is how you run dynamic creative now. You, you upload a responsive display ad, and then under settings, you go into, oh, sorry, I want my campaign settings. I'm at the ad group level here. So under campaign settings, you want to make sure that this is switched on. So use dynamic feed ads. So you want that button switched on and then within your ad groups, you want responsive display ads to be present and then your retargeting campaign will be generating uh, the nice dynamic ads that show the exact product that was being reviewed on the site before. So there you have it, that, those are some quick things that you can review in Google Ads to check that your agency or contractor is doing a decent job and not falling afoul of some of these common red flags. So there you have it, a quick and easy process you can use to check if your PPC agency is doing decent work. What I've shown you today are some simple red flags you can look for. If you find any of these issues happening in your account, I'd recommend first reaching out to your agency and discussing it openly with them. Maybe there's a good reason why they didn't do that thing, so give them a chance to explain. The thing I would really watch out for though is when your agency repeatedly triggers red flags like these ones without a good explanation, and you get a sense that not much care and attention is being put into the account. It's in times like those that you might benefit from getting a free audit done on your account by another provider. Most PPC agencies, like Bigflare for example, will actually do an in-depth audit of your Google Ads account for you for free, assuming there's a decent chance that they might get to work with you. So reach out to an agency or three if you like, feel free to make one of those my agency Big Flare, and usually for a cost of a half an hour of your time talking to them on the phone, you'll get a free in-depth analysis of your account and where you could be making more money in that account. If you like this video, then hit the subscribe and bell button right now. I'm here all night, guys, talking the PPC and e-commerce things, so tag along and join me by subscribing. And if you fancy an in-depth and free audit of your Google Ads account, drop me a line via my website, bigflare.com. Most agency sees will... Most agency sees? Mm -hmm. <laughs> In this video? No, no, definitely not. So, whoa, whoa, way too fast, okay.